Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, what a week it's been. Here we are, the Thursday after Easter Sunday, after Easter M Monday, and we are still in what is known as, or what is called, I should say, Easter Tide. And in Easter Tide, uh, we have Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday, Easter evening, Easter sunrise, Easter Monday, Easter Tuesday, Easter Wednesday. And then we jump from that point to the second Sunday of Easter. Now, the second Sunday of Easter uh, has Christ not only risen from the dead, well, I shouldn't say not only, has Christ risen from the dead, but instead of uh, the faithful women who came to the tomb and saw the tomb uh, empty, and Mary who uh, mistaken Christ as the gardener, and uh, he called her name, and she called him Rabboni, Rabbi, teacher. Um, instead of just that, we're going to have Christ actually appearing to the disciples in our reading. Our, excuse me, in our readings, but particularly in our gospel reading. And then we are going to go over uh, our hymn for this Sunday, as well as our collect prayer. We'll probably get started uh, with that. Uh, our hymn for today, in case you have a hymnal, is 470, O Sons and Daughters of the King. Uh, and, and in that in particular, it has the triple Alleluia, which I absolutely adore. Uh, the triple alle Alleluia, of course, just to give you a little sneak peek into what we're going to discuss. The triple Alleluia, of course, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, let us jump right into the collect for the second Sunday in Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now for this Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Easter, we're going to have another Ezekiel text. Um, Ezekiel, if you recall from what we had the three services, and I preached on each text um, uh, on Easter, Easter sunrise, Easter 8.30, Easter 10.30. Each one was a different sermon. Uh, each one was preached according to the, the, the different readings. Um, and the reason that I did that was not only in case uh, people came to multi-services, uh, particularly sunrise and then 8.30 or sunrise and then 10.30, I could see that happening very easily. Uh, in fact, we had a couple of members who came to the sunrise at 6 o'clock and then came either came back or stayed for the 8.30. I don't think anyone came back to 10.30 from sunrise. but uh, So I preached three different sermons for that reason, and also because it is always good to be in God's Word, uh, and while it it takes a lot of mental energy and uh, a, a lot of time for translation, exegesis, pulling things out of Scripture. That's what exegesis means. Ek. Uh, we have we from the we we have the English word dissection, uh, meaning to cut and pull out. Of scripture so all of that takes time uh, and a lot of mental energy uh, but it was it's it's worth it It takes a lot of time but it's definitely uh, worth it and preaching three different sermons instead of just one sermon uh, for three different services because each service is uh, is different but 
the readings for 8.30 and 10.30 were the same, and so I preached separate sermons. Anyway, one of those was Ezekiel, uh, the, the Valley of Dry Bones, one of my favorite texts. So for the second Sunday, uh, we, we have the same uh, reading, just a little, a little longer. Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. Give me one second. I believe that was the vigil of Easter. It was the, vi the vigil of Easter. My mistake. Uh, Ezekiel, the Valley of Dry Bones, the 37th chapter. And this is 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. And it was full of bones, and he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very, they were very dry. That's important. I'm going to come back to that point. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, that is, all of our uh, cartilage and uh, and, and things that connect bone to bone, which is also uh, important. Bone to bone, sinew to bone, flesh to bone, um, and bones no longer being dry, but being um, covered with flesh and water. As you, as you know, we are mostly water uh, in, our, in our bodies, in our beings. And I will lay sinew upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and shall know that I am the Lord. So let, let's remember that. Sinew, flesh, skin, and breath. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling. And the bones came together bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, O son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet in, ex in an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, behold, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and rise you from the graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. Spirit here is also the Greek word, the, uh, the Hebrew word, and the, but particularly the Greek word is panoima. And in panoima, in case you ever wondered why, Pneumonia has starts with a P. It's because panoia uh, is the Greek word for breath, um, and that's why pneumonia speaks of the lungs. Panoima uh, and pneumatic, um, that which which causes breath. Behold, I'll open the graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and shall bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and rise you from, from your graves, O my people. And I will put my panoima within you, and you shall live. 
and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. So, one of the most important points here that I want to uh, point out is why the Valley of Dry Bones was dry and why it matters that the bones were actually dry. The reason that that's important is because if you were to take away skin, flesh, and sinew, and you had bones from after taking all of those things away, those bones would still be moist. They would, they would still be wet. In fact, inside of the bone, you would find, of course, uh, marrow. And then in the marrow, you would see that the entire bones, uh, or, or each bone according to its marrow, uh, is moist. And therefore, when we die, um, our bones remain moist until a certain amount of time has passed. So, when they speak, uh, when, when God speaks here in Ezekiel of the valley of dry bones, it's important because it says not only are they dead, they are very dead, and they've been dead for a long time. And in that, we find God's great power. Uh, and of course, we say, well, in God's great power, of course, He can resurrect uh, whomever He wanted, uh, whoever He wants and wanted. Uh, and yet, when Lazarus was raised from the dead, when, when, and when Lazarus died, Jesus wept. He was full of emotion and showed his humanity to his disciples and ultimately uh, to us here on this side of the cross and resurrection uh, that he was full of emotion and wept for Lazarus even though he knew that he would raise him from the dead. Now, when Jesus raised him from the dead, we know that Lazarus walked out. So he was bone of bone, sinew of sinew, flesh of flesh, skin of skin, and when Christ brought him forward, breath of breath. However, in contrast to that, we had the valley of dry bones, which are very dry and therefore very dead and have been dead for a long time. Thus, it emphasizes the power of God uh, who can not only resurrect uh, whomever he wants, but he can resurrect the freshly dead, if you will, versus the very long time dead, dead for a long time. Uh, and in that we, we see two different, well, really a comparison and contrasting uh, thing that our Lord can resurrect both and does resurrect both. So, having already preached this on the Easter Vigil, I'm not going to preach it, preach the whole thing again. Uh, just know that the that those two things are uh, that that Lazarus and the Valley of Dry Bones both are resurrection. And what really ties them together is the panoima, the breath, the spirit, because both. Uh, were filled with the breath of life, uh, the panoima of, of, uh, of life. So, here we will go to the second reading, 1 John chapter 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, hyphen our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? And here is the testimony concerning the Son of God, or a testament concerning the Word of God. This is He who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and the blood. That's very much baptism. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. These three testify, and this is great, Panoima, the Spirit, 
the breath of life is the is the one who testifies because the panoima is the truth for these three for there are three that testify the panoima the spirit the water and the blood and all of these things agree now that is baptism it has to be baptism uh, because the blood of Christ the water uh, in, in holy baptism which uh, connects to the word and connects us to Christ uh, and of course the Holy Spirit who implants faith in us through holy baptism and I'll even say in with and under as that the famous Lutheran term goes uh, when it comes to the Lord's Supper but why not use it for baptism as well in with and under the water uh, we find the blood of Christ and uh, our dry bones at the end of, or at the bottom of the font. In the bottom of the font, by faith, we grow sinew, we grow flesh, we grow skin, and we're given a new breath in the panoima, the, ho the holy panoima, the Holy Spirit. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that He has borne concerning His Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning His Son. Now we'll continue on with our Gospel text. John chapter 20. And on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked, that is important, we'll come back to that, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Notice the very first words Christ says to his disciples. Peace be with you. That is the peace of Christ, that Christ is in the midst of them. Peace is with them because Christ is there. Peace be with him. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and he showed him his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold the forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now we're going to stop right there. There's more to the reading. We're going to see Doubting Thomas, though I prefer to call, call him Confessing Thomas because he makes one of the most pure and one of the most accurate confessions of faith um, in, in all of Scripture. So, here we have received the Holy Spirit, that is, that they were uh, ordained. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold the forgive, forgiveness of sins, they are withheld. Now, there are many denominations, that are, and I'm not speaking disparagingly, um, but it's not uncommon to hear, w when people hear the the uh, a Lutheran pastor saying, In the sin and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you, forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For members of other, other denominations to say, Well, man cannot forgive sins, and man cannot withhold sins. Um, well, actually, men in the pastoral office can retain sin, uh, and also grants the forgiveness of sin. Now, with that being said, it is not by the power of the pastor, it is not by power of the man, but it is in the office of Christ that the pastor is able to do this. It's not some kind of supernatural uh, power that lives in me that, I, that I'm able to miraculously forgive sins, but rather it's Christ who, who is the Word of God according to John 1. Uh, he is the one who is speaking these words. It is as if he said, 
uh, I, I forgive you of all of your sins. And so when the pastor speaks these words, when I speak these words uh, to you, I am speaking them on behalf of Christ. And Christ forgives you of all of your sins. Listen to it again. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, in the stead, instead, in, in the stance, in the stead, and by Christ's own command, that's the text that, that we just read in, uh, in 1 John, that makes, or John 20, excuse me. Uh, in the said, by the command that we see in John 20, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In that, uh, we find that it is not Gavin, it is not Pastor Mize, uh, it is not. Uh, it is not the members of the congregation. It is Christ that forgives sins upon the confession of sin. Now, here comes Jesus and Thomas. Now, Jesus, now Thomas, excuse me, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, "We have seen the Lord." But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the marks, mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will never believe. And this, that, this is why he gets the moniker of Doubting Thomas. But listen to this, and you're going to hear Christ say, Peace be with you for the third time, which is beautiful. Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. Although the, eight days later, the disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said, Thomas, put your finger here and see my, side, see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And here comes that beautiful, pure confession from confessing Thomas. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Oh, how beautiful. Five words. My Lord and my God. Five word confession of faith. Tom, uh, Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those and blessed are you who have not seen and yet believe. The purpose of this book. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. Thanks be to God. And that, that is the text I'll be preaching this Sunday. Hymn number 470 with the triple Alleluia. O sons and daughters of the King, whom heavenly host in glory sing, today the grave has lost its sting. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. That Easter morn at break of day, the faithful woman went their way, women went their way to seek the tomb where Jesus lay. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Note that this is also coming uh, in storybook form, or I should say book form, chapter, 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 chapter. One leading to the next, leading to the next, leading to the next. An angel clad in white they see. Remember, they're talking about the women who were running to the tomb. Who sits and speaks unto the three. Your Lord will go to Galilee. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Next chapter. That night the apostles met in fear. Among them came their master dear and said, Peace be with you here. Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. Hymn 470, peace be with you. When Thomas, when Thomas first the tidings heard that they had seen the risen Lord, he doubted the disciples' word. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And here we're going to see Thomas 
two more times in sequence here. My pierced side, O Thomas C., and look upon my hands and feet. Not faithless, but believing be. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. No longer Thomas then denied. He saw the feet and hands the side. You are my Lord and my God, he cried. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And now we're going to see continuing the close of uh, uh, that this chapter, that chapter of John. How, blast, how blessed are they who have not seen, and yet whose faith has constant been, for they eternal life shall win. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. On this most holy day of days, be laud and jubilee and praise. To God our hearts and voices raise. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So we are looking forward to, uh, to this Sunday, the second Sunday uh, of Easter. And, of course, the pericope that I just read will be the pericope for this Sunday. Pericope, that is, the collect and the readings. Um, let us pray for the health of all people. St. John, the fifth chapter. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool. In Aramaic, it was called Bethsaida, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him laying there, he knew that he had already been there a long time and said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all, we humbly implore You that You make Your ways known to all people and give Your saving health to all nations. Especially we pray for Your Holy Catholic Church, that it might be governed and guided by Your Holy Spirit, that all who profess the Holy Christian faith may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bonds of peace and in the righteousness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and we will see you this Sunday.